I'm Christine Gibson. It's important that we use masks to protect each other right now. But what we have to consider is that masks deny us a really crucial part of what makes us feel emotionally safe. We as humans, as mammals, use a part of our nervous system called the vagus nerve that innervates the front part of our body that goes towards our facial expression muscles, our inner ear, also our heart rate to establish safety when we're in a group of people. And we check to see whether we're safe by using parts of our brain called mirror neurons. Are you safe? Are you responding with your facial expression and your tone of voice in the way that I expect, in a way that seems um, reasonable to me right now? So those cues are really important for a person who's within what we call the window of tolerance, which means that you feel like you can cope with the amount of stress in front of you. When we have the mask on, it doesn't really allow us to use the cues of facial expression, which means that our tone of voice, things like prosody or the sing-song nature of our voice, and the way that we have the force of voice, so are we kind of shouting, sounding aggressive or irritable, those things really matter right now. Part of the problem is not just because of masking, but because of the pandemic and other social issues, um, being stuck with your family, having issues with poverty or underemployment, a lot of us are stressed for a variety of reasons. And that takes us out of the window of tolerance in one of two ways. So here I'm gonna describe a concept called the polyvagal theory. And this was something that was researched by Dr. Stephen Porges. This is the book about it. Um, as far back as the 1960s. So something that's been around for a very long time, but um, for those of us who study it in the context of healthcare and psychotherapy, it's crucially important to understand, especially right now. So when you're in the window of tolerance, you're using part of your parasympathetic nervous system, which is the rest and digest nervous system. And you are allowing safe cues that were formed in the mammalian brain to help you make decisions about your own personal safety. When you get thrown out of this window, one of the most common places that a mammal, certainly a human, might go is into sympathetic drive. And that's what we call the fight or flight response. So that's also part of your autonomic nervous system, which means that it's a reflex response. So something happens to you and your reflex is to get tense because you want to run away from it or fight it off. Your heart starts pounding because it's getting ready to bring more blood flow to those muscles that need to do something. And we can carry that tension if we don't release it. So the tension that builds up in our muscles and the pounding heart can result in chronic pain, can result in high blood pressure. And that uh, sympathetic drive um, also turns off our rest and digest or calm nervous system. So that means your um, gastrointestinal tract, so the things that allow you to eat and to digest your food safely, your bowel and bladder function, um, also your sexual drive and your sex um, hormones. Uh, most importantly though, at, in these times, is your immune system. So if your sympathetic system is in constant overdrive, your immune system actively shuts down. How do we tip the balance back in favor of the calm nervous system when we can tell through a concept that Dr. Porges called neuroception, which is how your body tells you, tells you, tells your brain what's happening. So if your body is sending signals of tension, of stress, of fear, then your brain will respond by um, keeping this cortisol, adrenaline, all of these hormones that allow you to fight or flight or have a high tone response. So we can counteract with the parasympathetic response. So I mentioned the gastrointestinal tract. So if you're eating healthy snacks or taking sips of water or herbal tea throughout the day, obviously caffeinated tea is going to send a cascade of symptoms to your body where it's going to think, oh my gosh, my heart's really pounding. I must be feeling stressed again. So avoiding caffeinated beverages at this time is helpful. Um, so uh, anything that puts 
pressure within the inside uh, of your body and stimulates the digestive tract is good. Um, things like gargling. And you get an extra bonus if you gargle with cold water because the sensation of cold also activates your parasympathetic response. So in other therapy modalities like DBT, you've heard people say you could put a hand in cold water or splash your face with cold water. That can also be really useful. Um, progressive muscle relaxation. So that would be starting with your feet and kind of tensing and releasing and then going all the way up to the very top of your head in order of the muscle groups can be another way to uh, take those tense muscles and remind your body they're not in danger right now. You can come out of that tense response. Another great way to relax those tense muscles is by some daily movement or exercise. So even taking a walk can be really beneficial, but if your muscles of your body are in constant tension, then one way to relieve that would be to allow them a release. Um, yoga works great for this as well as Qigong, and both of those pay a lot of attention to your breath, which can be extra important. The exhalation part of your breath stimulates the parasympathetic nervous system. So it allows your body to flip out of that stress response and into a calmer response. So exhalation can be breath work. So if you're taking a nice deep inhalation for however many seconds works for you, then you'd want to try to exhale for a little bit longer and hold it at the bottom. So deep breath in, longer breath out. Hold at the bottom. That's a great way to bring the parasympathetic nervous system on board. Sometimes breath work can be a little bit triggering because it starts your brain working because it's just a little bit too monotonous. So another way to exhale would be to play a recorder or a flute, if that's something that's you've got around the house. Um, singing, humming. If you sing in a group, then you get even extra um, calming response because that sense of connection, co-regulation, and mirror neurons comes into play. So we can co-regulate with other humans. And the fact that we are physical distancing and often isolated from friends or family right now makes that a little bit harder. So finding ways to connect online for that co-regulation is really helpful. The last piece of the polyvagal theory that not a lot of people know about is that when your sympathetic response becomes overwhelmed, you can actually tap into a vagus nerve response that follows down the back body. So the vagus nerve goes into your facial muscles, and that's what we call ventral vagus or front side of the vagus. The dorsal vagus nerve goes down the back of your spine uh, up against the psoas muscle and some of the big muscles that are on the inside of your ribs. And it can also um, kick in as a stress response after the, the sympathetic system has been overwhelmed. And so this is called the dorsal vagal response that Dr. Porges researched. And when this happens, um, most of the vagus nerve is sending signals from your body to your brain to tell it what's happening. And these signals get interrupted and it starts to feel like there's not really anything happening. So what happens when this part of the vagus nerve gets stimulated is something more like a dissociated or disconnected response. You might notice your muscles don't have a lot of tone. So you might feel like just flopping on the couch and hanging out there for a while. Um, having too much sleep, too much food, that might be the kind of thing that could happen in this response. Um, that feeling of dissociation means that sometimes we feel like we need to have space from the people in our lives that we would normally interact with, feeling depersonalized. So like you're not even in your own body, um, like you're just kind of going through the motions like a robot, like you're just not even quite there. In the animal kingdom, this response would be called a feigned death. So if you're trying to escape from a predator, the sympathetic response would be to try to fight it off or to run away or to have a high tone freeze. The parasympathetic dorsal vagus, so the backside of the vagus nerve, it would respond to a predator with what we call a feigned death. Just drop to the floor, pretend you're dead, hope the predator goes away. And so you can see how the human body was programmed to have the stress response as high tone, agitated, 
angry, irritable, um, feeling really tense, but it's also programmed to have that disconnected response. And so you might see this from people that are in your life, whether it's neighbors or family, um, the one side, they might be irritable. They might be feeling really stressed out all the time and really triggered and reactive. And on the other side, they just might be looking like they're not motivated to do anything and they can't show up to things and they can't, you know, be productive and, and manage to do the right thing in a given scenario. These two responses are really common for people who've gone through complex trauma, but right now we're all in this collective trauma. And I think it's important for us to be compassionate to ourselves and others and understanding the way that the body works is a step towards that because you can forgive yourself for having these basic physiologic responses that are really great coping mechanisms that keep us out of danger and they sometimes go into overdrive. So as a reminder, uh, trying to keep in that window of tolerance, activating the gastrointestinal, so the rest and digest mode, um, trying to listen to your body when it needs sleep, when it needs food, when it needs water. Um, your body does know what it needs. Doing lots of co-regulation that might be available to you. Um, something that can be really helpful is a guided imagery technique where you would imagine a safe person or a safe place and really evoke all of the senses around that. What is a voice like? What would, might you smell? if something was safe. So trying to help train your body to find that window of tolerance and trying to really pay attention as to which danger mode you might've slipped into. Is it high tone really tense or is it low tone really floppy? The more we practice neuroreception, the better we get at it. And there are some techniques and tools like the um, aura ring, um, which is technology that's available to some of us. Um, but we can actually just do neuro, neuroception on our own because the body was made to do this. The body was made to have these coping responses and the body was made to understand and, you know, practice uh, feedback within our own system so that we might learn our own bodies and brains better and what that connection looks like. Um, Thanks for listening and be safe out there.